So would somebody like to explain to me just why the second set of every competitive year since like 2003 or something has been absolutely insane and has changed everything about how we play the game? It's ev every set from like Team Rockets Returns, Dragon Frontiers, Delta Species, you know, Secret Wonders, it's just absolutely cracked and it's it's crazy how that just keeps happening. Hey guys, this is Game of Cow, welcome to another Pokemon TCG History discussion video. This time we're on to Stormfront, which is, uh, yeah, the set before SPs, so it's not even the main mechanic of 2009, and it's just crazy. Uh, there's not as many cards in this set as there was in the last one, but almost all of them are like defining in some way or another. There's only a few which are kind of irrelevant, so we're gonna have to take a while. It's been like 50 minutes, um, almost an hour even, that uh, the last attempt I had of recording this. If you're wondering why we haven't done anything for a week, it's because TTS updated and literally destroyed the game uh, during the week and until after we would have played on Saturday the cards just did not respect gravity, so they would float over everything and it was literally unplayable. Like, it was technically to the point where if you were really careful you could group stuff up and shuffle and be great and all of that, but none of the, none of the playmat stuff worked and it was so hard to keep track of and everything just like floated on top of each other. It was stupid, so we didn't do anything. This week we might not be able to do stuff because we're going to be, at least in my household, we're going to be dog watching for the next like week and a half, and apparently he is a very lively one, so I don't know if I'm going to have the time to be able to do stuff this weekend, but that's fine. We will get there, and uh, trust me, this set's worth the wait. So. Yeah, a lot of good stuff in here. There's a couple of promos that are worth talking about as well. Uh, Dust Noir and Veggie Gigas down here are actually good cards, so we'll get over those as we as we get to them. Uh, Magnus, unfortunately, is outclassed, so we'll just look at it here because it's cool. Uh, Magnet Slash just takes a bit too many energy for what it does, really, so too bad. The other Magnus zones are way better. We'll look at the trainers first because they are generally the uh, interesting bit when it comes to new engines and such for decks. Conductive Quarry is an intriguing one. You'd think this works really well in Magnezone, but it actually kind of doesn't because it wants this stuff in the discard. Once during each player's turn, the turn player may flip a coin. If heads, that player searches a discard for a lightning or metal energy, shows it to the opponent, puts it into the hand. Key thing with this, it does not say basic metal energy, so you can get specials too. This is going to ring true with the Magnezone we'll see later on as well. So very, very good card, just not really one for the Magnezone deck because it accelerates from discard. Energy Link is an intriguing card. You attach it as a tool to one of your Pokemon, and if you can attach a second one of these to a different Pokemon, you can move energy between those, po those two Pokemon as many times as you want during the turn. If you put a third one of these down on a different Pokemon, you can link between all three of them. Really cool effect. There's a couple of cards this would work well with. Uh, the Regirock from the last set, if you don't uh, put down Start Mountain for whatever reason, or if you want something onto a non-fighting Pokemon, that can be quite good. Uh, any effect like Typhlosion that accelerates from the discard can do well here. Electivire where you accelerate only to the Electivire is quite nice for this as well. So lots of cool stuff you can do. We get a reprint of Energy Switch, you know, whatever. Great Ball comes back in here. Good card, don't know if we need it really because we've got Roseanne and we've got uh, Call Energy. So I don't know if we need this card, but also doesn't trigger Yuxi, so I don't know how good it actually is. Luxury Ball is amazing here. This is search your deck for any Pokemon that isn't level X, put it into the hand, but if you have a Luxury Ball in the discard pile, you can't play this card at all. So most of the time this is just a one-off in every single deck, there is literally zero reason not to play this card, but it isn't often run at more than one. I've seen some lists that play two, just because you want to find it early, but if you do that, you may end up messing up and not being able to play anymore, which is a bit of a shame. Uh, Marley's Request is an interesting card I have not actually played with yet. Uh, search your discard pile for two different trainer, supporter, or stadium cards. Show them to your opponent. Your opponent chooses one of them to go to the hand, the other one gets discarded again. So, it's kind of weird. Like, if 
all of your trainer supported stadiums that are in the discard have the same name, you just choose one and puts it, put it back to hand. So you could, in theory, play this early to get a second Luxury Ball or something. Uh, the main deck that we saw that uses this is Next Set with Paragon Z because it uses the two technical machines that we played, uh, that we had last round in Legends Awakened, and Paragon Z does more damage for the technical machines it has attached to it, if I remember rightly. So you're able to pick up one of the two, and it doesn't matter which one you take. So it's just a damage output thing at that point. Not really sure how I feel about this one. The opponent gets to choose the worst card for the situation, right? But you can kind of engineer it, so like, say you take a Luxury Ball or a Plus Power, or one of these cards we'll talk about soon. And it's like, well, the opponent gives you a free search, or they give you a really, really strong mod otherwise. So there are definitely situations this is good, but is it worth a supporter? Not really sure. Also, what's she doing in that field anyway? It's just like, I know this has just been the Gen 4 thing, but it just doesn't make sense, my dude. Alright, now we get into my favorite trainer class from this lot, Play 2. Uh, Cross Switcher does this nowadays in Standard, but we've had plenty of iterations of these and this is the first one. Pokeblower here, if you play just one Pokeblower, you toss a coin and if heads, you do one dam you know, put one damage count on one of the opponent's Pokemon. Good effect if you can flip heads on it, uh, definitely something worth noting at least. But if you play two of them at the same time, it is Gust of Wind use one of the opponent's bench and switch it with their active. We do not have Pokemon Reversal at the moment, so we actually don't really have any actual gusting outside of, I guess, Palkia, but that's more double gust anyway, and Palkia level X is a huge liability. This card is insane, but how are you finding deck space for it in most decks is the thing. And also, you do need to find two at the same time. There aren't a lot of ways of searching for trainers or like items in particular, at least ones that make sense, except this guy. Poke Drawer Plus. If you play just one of these, draw one card. Really good effect, actually. Just cycling a card is still good, even if you only play one. But if you play two at the same time, double computer search. Search your deck for up to two cards, put them into hand. Don't have to show the opponent because it is any card out of your deck. This is ludicrous. Obviously, you can use this to say get rare candy plus stage two in order to immediately go out. That's the, the most basic use I've been having for it. But this could get you two copies of Pokeblower so it turns into Gust of Wind. It could give you plus powers that I've used it for as well. You could even get two copies of Energy Link if your deck relies on that sort of thing. And it's absolutely insane. Really, really good card. You could also take the next one, Poke Healer. So if you only play one of these, you remove one damage counter and one special condition from your active Pokemon. If you play two at the same time, heal eight and all special conditions from one of your actives. It's very fringe, the healer type ones of these have almost never really seen play, but there are a couple of dedicated tank decks, and we'll look at one of them here uh, in this set. There are a couple of dedicated tank decks that could get some really good use out of that. So it is worth noting regardless. Other stuff we got here, these are all reprints, but we do have Cyclone and Warp Energies reprinted here. Cyclone Energy especially looks quite nice here, in my opinion. But these are these have come back, we lost them for one set, and now we have them around again. It's really, really good. We also have a couple of other secret res here. We have the base set Charizard stuff coming back here. It's not good per se, but hey, it's it's cool, I suppose. You could technically do some work with this with like Leafy on or something if you wanted to. I don't know why you would, but like 100 damage for 4 discard 2 isn't even that special nowadays. So I don't know why you would, but you could if you really wanted to. We also have a couple of shiny Pokemon coming in here. Drifloon's Unburden is kind of nice, like, it just has zero retreat naturally, so yeah, Unburden is a negative ability, but the fact that it doesn't have a retreat cost in the first place makes it pretty good. Duskull is really good, there's a lot of good Duskull we're going to talk about in this set, and this is definitely up there as a good uh, approach for that deck, especially in the next set when Broken Time Space comes in. Counting Song is just decent enough, like you don't pay energy for it, you can put some damage counters on the Duskull, which is synergistic with one of the Dustwar, and you put damage counters on the opponent's Pokemon. Also it can attack for one energy, so there you go. And then the other one is the Voltorb, uh, one of my decks does play this actually, because there's an Electrode in this set that's pretty good. 
it's not an amazing thing, but it does have 60 HP and it does have, if you flip heads, snipe 20 anywhere on the opponent's board. That's good enough for me, to be honest. So yeah. On to the level X's. The Heatran is leveling up from the previous set's Heatran. Uh, heat Metal doesn't tend to come into play, but it is kind of cute if you do have some burn synergy. The opponent can't remove the burn by evolving or devolving or leveling up. And if the opponent has to flip a coin for burn, it's always treated as tails. So effectively it turns burn into a double poison that you can't remove. Whatever. The main reason this Heatran is cool and I've built decks on it is for Heatwave. Once at the end of your turn, if Heatran is on the bench and you discard basic energy for your fire or metal actives attacks, you can attach up to two of those energy back to that Pokemon. It does have to be benched, so if you want to play it with itself, you will need two level X's in play, but it lets you do a cool amount of damage with your stuff like Moltres, like Infernate from the previous sets. Really, really neat stuff. The Raichu level X, there is a Raichu we'll talk about in this set as well. Uh, basically, it has its own attack that for two lightning and a colorless, discards two lightning and snipes 80 anywhere on the opponent's board. But if you go ahead and use that attack, Voltage Shoot as it's called, you get to use another attack on Raichu immediately after that. I don't believe you can do this consecutively, uh, but you would need a ton of energy for that anyway. I'll have to have a look actually. If you could use this consecutively, it'd be great. But usually, you could use this with a Mysterious Treasures Raichu in order to re-accelerate your two lightning energy back to itself. So it effectively is just a quote-unquote free Snipe 80 on the opponent's board every turn, which is kind of neat. There's also the new Raichu in this set, which does 30 for 0, but you can't do that in consecutive turns. Or if you have 3 colorless energy on it, you get to do 50 and then move an energy from the Raichu to the bench. Or, more likely, you do 2 lightning and the colorless to do 100, which is good for a stage 1, but you do have to discard 3 energy across your board in any way that you like. There are ways of facilitating that, and we could definitely see it, but it's probably a little bit too situational at the moment, so... There is that. The Machamp level X goes with a very good Machamp in this set that we'll go over. No Guard is weird, like this is a gigantic one of 150 HP, but No Guard effectively nullifies that because it makes both you and your opponent's actives take 60 more damage whilst this is in play, like in the active slot. It is very silly. Its own attack is like looks really bad but because of the body it's actually quite strong one fighting two colors to do just 20 damage but that's up to 80 when you put no guard in play and if machamp would be ko'd by damage from an attack next turn you flip a coin and if heads it focus bats goes to 10 hp instead one other key note here is this unlike most level x's this actually has a plus 40 weakness to psychic which means that yuxi doesn't like one shot you because otherwise it would, right? Because the Yuxi doing 20 damage, if it's like plus 60, uh, it's after applying weakness of resistance. So, yeah, that's kind of weird actually. I'm reading this now and I'm just like, why is it that way? So Machamp does 60 damage more before applying weakness of resistance. So like a 20 damage hit will suddenly be 160 with weakness. But the opponent takes uh, does 60 more to you after applying weakness of resistance. So that Yuxi will do 120 instead of the regular 20, but if it was applied beforehand at a times 2 it would do 160, so it's like, yeah it's kind of weird, I don't really understand that, whatever, doesn't matter. The Machamp in this set is meta defining, uh, mostly for the sets beyond this, because we're going to get a lot more basic heavy in the next sets because of Pokemon SP. Take out for 1 energy does 40 damage, but if the opponent isn't an evolved Pokemon, it doesn't do damage, it kills them instead. So instant knockout, this is why Unknown G was mandatory in multiples for so many decks, because any deck that is relying solely on basic Pokemon, think AMU from the last set, uh, as a Mesprit Yuxi, or even Mewtwo level X, uh, they just immediately die. But if you actually have an Unknown G equipped, then Takeout doesn't do any damage and it can't knock them out because it's an effective attack, so bleh. 
Other attacks it has, Hurricane Punch for two colorless. This used to be two fighting and two colorless back in the... Uh, Oh, when was it? It was like free fighting and a colorless on Giovanni's Machamp, I think. And then Sky Ridge, it was two fighting, two colorless. Two colorless down uh, energy, four coins, 30 damage times number of heads. Kind of good, actually. <laughs> Especially if you put no guard on this, too. That's like 90 for the first one at that point. Really nice. And then the two fighting, two colorless attack here is Rage. 60 plus 10 for every damage counter on Machamp. If Machamp somehow doesn't die, and then you like level exit or something, then this is going to do absolutely god tier amounts of damage. But it is for 4 energy, so, you know, take it as you will. The other level X that we have here, well, Regigigas is probably the next best one to look at. We should maybe actually take a look at the other Gigas's first. Do keep in mind there was one in Legends Awaken that lets you recover from a status condition if you attach an energy to it uh, in the active. And it did, what was it, three colors to do 60, and if you flipped heads, 80 instead, and 20 to one of the opponent's bench. This Regigigas nowhere near as good. If you have Regirot, Regice, and Registeel in play, then all of your Regigigas' attacks are a colorless less to use, which is cool in theory, but the Regis have no synergy with each other whatsoever, so you would never be able to do this in a reasonable amount of time. Also, Giga Power is just not super strong here. We do have the promo Regigigas available, which is insane, actually. Uh, it does read a little expensive, but it'll make sense when we look at the level X. Free colorless energy, 30 damage. Before doing damage, you can switch the opponent's uh, act, uh, you know, active up. You just get to choose what comes in as well. So definitely a strong effect there. And then Giga Hammer for four colorless does 80, and Regigigas can't use it in consecutive turns. That's okay though, because Regigigas level X has an attack that you would want to use. Also, this thing is absolutely gigantic for like no good reason. 100, I mean, obviously it's a good reason, it's a Regigigas, but whatever. 150 HP on a basic level X. There is only like two level Xs which are bigger than that at the moment. Torterra and Rhyperia, both of which are stage twos. Insane stuff. Snowpoint Temple works on this, by the way, to make it as big as Rhyperia. The attack is Water Fighting Metal Colorless. <laughs> <laughs> to do 100 damage, again, I promise this will make sense as we read it. You can see it already, but whatever. 100 damage, discard the top card of the opponent's deck, and then choose a random card from the hand to discard, but you can't use this Giga Blaster in consecutive turns. So you alternate between Blaster and uh, Hammer down here, and you're effectively doing 180 across like two separate turns. Pretty good, but how the hell are you charging this up, right? It just seems way, way, way too expensive. Well, that's where Sacrifice comes in. You knock out one of your Pokemon, so the opponent does take a prize for this, and then you search your discard pile for up to two basic energy to put onto Regigigas, and heal eight damage counters from Regigigas. In case this thing couldn't tank enough beforehand, you are giving up prizes to do this, but this gives you 50% of your energy already. Just, uh, just straight up. So you can use this drag off without even having a previous turn attached, but because it's a level X, you're going to have to have it in play for a turn anyway. So you probably put an energy on this the first turn, sacrifice, get two energy on it the second turn. And those energy can be all the types that you need to do Giga Blaster as well. So it's not that hard to set up, actually. And this guy really works with the Poke Healer, too. Definitely a very helpful one there, because stuff like Confusion is really, really bad to deal with here. So absolutely a decent combo if you can pull that off. The last level X has got an essay on here. I mean, you would be, you, you'd be, you know, mistaking this for a Yu-Gi-Oh card. Jesus Christ. Dust Noir level X is wild. It doesn't actually do anything more than the regular Dust Noirs do as far as attacks and stuff go. But if it gets KO'd by damage whilst in the active slot, you place this as a stadium card in play that stadium card puts a damage counter on all of the opponent's Pokemon in between every turn. And if the stadium Dustomar here gets bounced, uh, either discarded or just, you know, another stadium comes into play, the level X gets put back into the hand. So you can try and do it again. Dustomar itself has been a little bit uh, underperforming, we'll say, during the midweek testing stuff that we did last Wednesday, but... 
I think it's just tricky to play and maybe we haven't got the actual build lined up for it well yet because the cards are really really good. All three Dust Noir we have access to here plus the Dark Palm one are insane. You actually have to leave one of them out which is crazy and that's if you're playing just one of each. Shadow Command Dust Noir over here could actually be played as the main one, and I think often was too. Uh, the Poker Power lets you draw two cards once per turn. If you have seven or more cards in hand after that, you discard until you only have six left. Regardless, you put two damage counters on Dust Noir. So this one is the one that synergizes best with the shiny Dust Skull from before. Not because you want to put a ton of counters on this thing, but because damage even for a Psychic and Colorless puts damage on the opponent are one of their Pokemon equal to the amount of damage counters on the Dust Noir. So you can ping a lot here. Unknown G is definitely required to protect your best stuff from this. But it gets a little bit better because if you remember Mr. Mime all the way back in Mysterious Treasures, this actually has that on an attack here too, the power that Mr. Mime had. For two Psychic and the Colors you do 50 damage with Night Spin, but you get to prevent all effects of attacks, including damage, done to Dust Noir by an any opponent's Pokemon that has two or less energy attached in their next turn. Which is crazy. A lot of the decks in this format, especially because we've lost double rainbows and whatnot, they rely on having cheap attacks. One, maybe two energy at most. There are exceptions that we go into, but uh, just look, Gengar is one energy, or two for its second attack. Mach uh, Gyarados is zero. Machamp is one or two for the most part. This is going to blank a lot of things that we talk about, a lot of the best decks as well. So it doesn't do a ton of damage in immediately, but it stops the opponent from doing lots of stuff, which is really, really good. If you want a better synergy with the level X, however, you are probably going to use this Dust Noir as the main one. As long as it's active, you put a damage counter on each, each of the opponent's Pokemon that has any energy attached to them in between turns. Pretty good against the likes of Kingdra, because, I mean, Kingdra is another one that this that this guy can stop quite well. But Kingdra is another deck that tends to spread its energy around an awful lot, and this just puts extra counters down, which is really good. If the opponent already has two or more damage counters on them, instead of doing 60 for Psychic Double Colorless, Darkness Mist will do 80 instead. So it synergizes with itself as well. And also, again, put the level X on this thing. When this one gets KO'd, get another one of these up. Does a bunch of damage counters in between turns and is really, really nice. The last Dust Noir we have here has 10 more HP than the other ones. So, you know, that can help sometimes. Uh, once, during your opponent's, uh, once during your turn before you attack, you can flip a coin. If heads, look at the opponent's hand, choose a Pokemon you find there, put it to the bottom of the deck. So nice little pocket power that you can have, it doesn't have to be uh, in the active slot to use that as well. But it's got a good attack so you're probably going to have it in the active slot. Reaper Pulse for 2 Psychic and the Colors to 70 and then you move up to 2 damage counters from the Dust Noir to one of the opponent's bench Pokemon. So yeah, it heals itself a little bit, it effectively does 70 spread 20. There's a lot to like about that. Every single one of these is good, and we still have Dark Palm available as well. So, yeah, it's a good time to be a Dust Noir fan, that's for sure. So that's all the level X's, and a little bit of a glimpse into some of the stuff here. Let's... Ah, oh, wow. 23 minutes in, let's finally start looking at the main set. We get extra Stage 2's for the Gen 4 starters here. We don't get any Prevos for them, but that's fine, we've got good ones already. They're all the alternate type for this, which is really cool. The Gen 4 was the first time that that was possible, so yeah, good stuff. Empoleon is the weakest of the three in my humble opinion, but Emperor Aura is still really strong if you could use this for like super scoop ups and whatnot. If you evolve your active into Empoleon, you get to stop the opponent attaching energy from hand next turn. So you delay them by a turn, and that's, that's cool. But the attacks are not amazing here. Two colorless for 40 damage, reduce damage to Empoleon by 20 next turn, okay. Uh, water double colorless, 60 if heads discard an energy on the active Pokemon, okay. Not really anything too good, and honestly, we've banned the other Empoleon, so this one probably isn't seeing play. Infernape, on the other hand, uh, very reminiscent of the Neo Genesis Typhlosion, where if you evolve into Infernape, you flip a coin, if heads search your deck for up to four fire energy cards, attach them to your Pokemon in any way that you like. Really, really cool. 
For two colors, again, it's uh, close combat does 60, so good damage output with the fighting typing here. You do take 30 more damage next turn, which is a little bit awkward, but still, uh, 60 for two can't really be sniffed at. And then two fire, two colorless to do 80 is expensive. Discard two fire energy is incredibly expensive. But you also get to spread 20 to each of the opponent's bench Pokemon. We did this with Kyogre last week, and Kyogre is the more accessible card, but Infernape has great potential with its own attack and the level X, right? Because the level X can still go on top of this, and that's really cool. Super strong attack, but it's just very hard to build around. We'll go over the Torterra as well, because that's here too. Uh, Sunshine Song is utterly ludicrous. Some of the midweek stuff I did with this in Beedrill is insane. Once during your turn before you attack, when you evolve into Torterra, choose as many of your grass Pokemon in play as you like, and for each one that you chose, evolve that Pokemon from the deck. So, in Beedrill, I used this to get, I believe it was just get two Beedrill, uh, it was either like that and a Beedrill and a Kakuna. Pretty sure I've gotten like two Beedrill and a Kakuna out of the deck with this thing. Absolutely ridiculous. But it gets a little bit better, because its own attacks are good too. Crash Impact for, again, two Colorless Energy. 60, it does 20 to itself, and then the opponent switches the uh, defending Pokemon with one of their benched if they can. And then two grass and two colors does 80, so again, a little bit expensive here. Um, you can't septile this, unfortunately, until you level exit. But still, two grass, two colors to do 80, and if the opponent puts a basic Pokemon from their hand onto the bench next turn, put two damage counters on that Pokemon. Very, very strong card. Also gives Torterra fighting coverage, which is something it didn't have before. So, really good card. Moving on, we have Luminion over here, which has seen a bit of tech play in some decks, and I think we need to explore it very slightly more, because this card is kind of insane, to be honest. Um, Fin Luster, when it's the active Pokémon once per turn, you can look at the opponent's hand. If their bench isn't full, choose a basic Pokémon from their hand, put it onto the bench, switch it with the active. Really good synergy with the Dust Noir, like Dark Palm, obviously. It's got good synergy with Miss Magus that we'll talk about in this set in a bit as well, where that also can bounce stuff away if they, uh, if they have too many Pokémon to play. Quick Swim is okay, uh, 20 damage for 0 energy, it does snipe that 20, but if you do it to the active it's not affected by weakness or resistance, so you know, kind of whatever. And then Warm Water energy, it's 30 damage and it heads, prevent all effects of attacks including damage done next turn, it's uh, agility. Only 80 HP on this thing, but it does also have 0 retreat, so it's strong, really good card to have around. Magnezones, this is where the level X in the previous set comes in. Remember that one is in Metal or Lightning Energy Trans is the main thing for it. And for two energy, uh, it's Lightning Metal, Discard, uh, Lightning and Metal, but 80 also Paralysis. That's the baseline we're working with. These are the things that will level up into that Magnezone. First one here, the Metal one, lets you once per turn search your deck for a Lightning or Metal Pokemon, put it into hand. So this is the one you want to get out to search the rest of the archetype out. Speed Shot for Lightning Colors does 30 Snipe anywhere that you want, and it's not affected by any type of effect on the opponent's Pokémon, so no weakness, no resistance, no powers, bodies, reduction and such. So pretty cool. And then Crush Vault for Lightning Double Colors does 80 and discard any one energy on this Pokémon. So respectable. The other Magnezone is the one you generally play two of. It lets you search your discard pile once per turn for a lightning or metal energy, once again, not basic, specials as well. Attach it to the active, put a damage counter on that Pokemon. This lets you get back your special medals, which is really good, so you can tank a bit more damage. And then for lightning double colorless, it does 60, and you can switch the Magnezone with one of your bench Pokemon. If you do, you force the opponent to switch as well. A little bit awkward, to be honest. Uh, I had a hard time making this deck truly work. I don't think this is the kind of deck I'm skilled enough at using, but it is a very strong one nonetheless, so keep an eye on it. It might actually come up at some point. Miss Magus is pretty strong. For zero energy, choose up to four in any combination of tools and technical machine cards in play, both yours and your opponent's. You discard them, and you do 20 damage for each one you discarded in this way. You can't discard Unknown G with this, unfortunately, because this is an effect of an attack, so the Unknown G is protected, and you don't do 20 damage for it. But if you play enough of the tools and stuff yourself, and we are going to get to the point where tools are abundant enough where this could actually matter, that's a lot of damage for not a lot of energy. So, pretty cool. 
Horror Chant is also quite strong, Psychic Colors to do 40. If the opponent has 4 more bench Pokemon though, you get to choose one of them, return it and all cards attached to it to their hand. So the synergy with the Luminion is that you force their active to the bench by using Fin Luster and getting a, a basic out of their hand, and then you use the Miss Magus to bounce that Pokemon back that you gusted out back into their hand, set them back a few turns. Cool effect, don't know if it's actually going to end up being super useful, but we'll see. Sceptile works with the Wild Growth Sceptile from before, where any grass energy that you have on your grass Pokemon, the basic ones at least, do uh, double grasses instead of uh, just a single basic grass, so that's pretty cool. This one brings energy trans back into that as well, so you can now transfer your grass energy across your board in any way that you like. So yeah, very strong effect in there. Once again, two colors energy for its first attack here. Poison Leaf is 40 and auto poison, so 50 damage basically, unless it's an unknown G in play. Quite okay. And then Slice Drain for two grass and two colors does 60 and heals 20 from this Sceptile. Expensive on its own. If you have the other Sceptile out though, this is two energy and suddenly it becomes respectable. It's not bad. Uh, I think I still prefer the regular stuff, but like having energy trans available is really, really strong. So we will take it. Next up is Bomber Snow. This card for two colors energy does 20 damage to each of the opponent's Pokemon in play, basically. Uh, 20 to the active guaranteed, 20 to each of the opponent's bench that aren't grass or water Pokemon, because that's the types that a Bomber Snow is. It also, as a Pokebody, whilst it's active, it makes all of your Pokemon take 20 less damage from the opponent's attacks, so it's good anti-spread as well uh, on the opponent's side. Below Zero probably isn't going to see much play here because it's a bit expensive for what it does, but at least a secondary effect of it. Water Double Color 60 is well below average, uh, but if the Obama Snow evolved from a Snowva this turn, it's 60 and also Paralysis. which. Okay, I don't think you're going to see that too much, but this should come up next set with the Manetric that we'll get to do also, you know, more spreading, and should be quite strong. Bronzong's mostly here for its Poke Power, but Heavy Potential is a good meme attack here as well. Uh, damage counters on each of the opponent's Pokemon equal to their Retreat Cost. There was an Aria dose that increased Retreat Cost, so that's a good meme deck if you want some fun. Strain Spin is interesting as well, like Psychic Colors to do 20, but if you match the opponent's hand size, it's 60 and Auto Confusion. Yeah, okay, whatever, it's 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 kind of there. The power is where this thing is at though. Once during your turn, you may choose a card from your hand, put it on top of the deck, then search your deck for two basic energies, put them into hand. So yeah, if you have some in-hand acceleration or if you can discard them and get some benefits that way, Cycler is a pretty strong effect. Uh, Pepper was using this with Regigigas in order to Felicity the uh, energy to the discard and use the Sacrifice to get them back into play. So cool stuff. Cherim is a good part of the Scizor deck we'll get into in a bit as well, but it can be used elsewhere too. Each of your Grass and Fire Pokemon's attacks do 10 more damage. This includes itself, so even though its attacks are relatively weak, Salty Sweet Pollen however that taste comes into play. For zero energy, does 20 and heals 20 from one of your Pokemon. That's actually 30 because Cheron does boost itself. Solar Beam is far too weak even with this boost though. Grass Double Colors to do just 50, so 60 with its own buff. That's just not strong enough on an 80 HP Pokemon, That when, especially when you don't want to attach energy to it, so yeah, unfortunate. The Drapion isn't really too worth noting, but Derail discards all special energies, so that might be useful at some point. Also, Cross Poison. This used to be like two grass and colorless. Now it's two colorless. Just uh, on a stage one, on a stage two as well. Drifblim's got a couple of zero energy attacks that are kind of neat. Uh, zero energy, put any one card from your discard pile into hand. That's pretty cool. There's not a massive amount of disruption at the moment, so maybe you could get that to stick. And. Uh, I don't think there's enough control stuff that it would work with though, but I could be proven wrong. Lifting is kind of cool, but by the time you get Driplum out, it's probably not worth it. Search your deck for up to two basic Pokemon and bench them. For each basic that you put onto the bench, search your deck for a basic energy and attach it as well. So that's cool, but I don't really know where that would come into play. 
And now we get to the big three. I mean, we've already talked about champs, so let's just talk about the next big two here. Gengar is probably the strongest card of the set, and I don't think it's even close. It's everything about this is just ridiculous. Okay, the 110 HP is maybe slightly low, but it's got zero retreat, so that makes up for it. Uh, its ability is nuts. If Gengar gets KO'd by damage from an attack, you may flip a coin if heads KO the thing that killed it. Just why? <laughs> it says the defending Pokemon here, but it is an errata. It's the attacking Pokemon is knocked out. So... Yeah, because defending Pokemon doesn't really make sense in the context of Gengar actually getting thingied. So, because Gengar's the defending Pokemon, right? So yeah, it's just stupid. Any matchup this thing is unfavorable in, it might still win anyway because you can just kill the thing that killed it on a coin flip. Just absolutely dumb. But it gets worse because this effect is technically in Sword and Shield standard as well, but it's not played because Cursler is terrible. This guy is anything but. One Psychic Energy, put 3 damage counters on one of the opponent's Pokemon. But if that Pokemon has a power, put 6 damage counters on it instead. Buff. Really, really strong there for just one energy, right? Poltergeist is pretty cool too, but probably doesn't see too much play until later on, where it's a Psychic Colus and you look at the opponent's hand, 30 damage times the number of trainer, supporter, and stadium cards in that hand. We don't really have a way at the moment of knowing what's in the opponent's hand, so it's a little bit tough to play this set. Next set we get Luka's Investigation which helps, and then later on we can stop the opponent playing trainers altogether with stuff like Spiritomb or even Vileplume later. This card stays relevant for ages and it's just disgusting. Really really dumb card. And then one that isn't relevant right now but will be later on as well is Gyarados. Next set when Broken Time Space comes into play this will be really really strong. For zero energy, 30 damage times number of Magikarp in your discard pile. When properly set up this is 90 damage for no energy whatsoever. Just what the hell my dude. The other the other attacks don't even matter, like the, the HP is the only other relevant thing here. I guess the fighting resistance is kinda nice. But yeah, 130 HP stage 1, you do have to evolve from a Magikarp, so that's still kind of difficult. But my guy, it doesn't matter when Broken Time Space is going to work, right? And it just lets you evolve immediately. So this card is insanely overstated. You don't ever see the other attacks because they are just bad, but 90 for 0. Good lord. Okay. Um, there's a Mammoth Swine in here that's kind of cool, uh, it takes a ton of energy to actually do the attack though, like water fighting double colorless on the stage 2 is a bit buff, but it does 60 base, 10 more for every Swine up on the bench, 20 more for every Pilot Swine on your bench, 40 more for every Mammoth Swine on your bench. So if you just evolve a couple of guys up, you're probably doing 120 with this thing, and that's a lot for how much HP this has got. Also, 5 energy retreat costs. Very rare that happens. So, yeah, kind of funny. Rose Raid is not amazing, but it is a Psychic type Rose Raid. You don't see this too often. Uh, if the opponent's poisoned, it does 80 for free. So, kind of 90 because the poison stuff comes in. <laughs> Excuse me. It also poisons if it takes damage whilst it's active. So, I guess that's cool. I don't know, like it's fine, but it's nothing too amazing, I don't think. Uh, Salamence will be better with the level X later on. If the opponent's got a hit, uh, Pokemon of 120 or more max HP in play, you ignore all the colorless on this guy's attacks. The only thing is, it's just like, how do you actually fuel Steam Twister? Because you have to discard a fire and a colorless. So, that's tough. But 120 damage for essentially 2 energy discard too is kind of really, really strong. So... Keep an eye on it, uh, when the level X comes into play and you can take extra prizes, this thing's probably going to be decent, because Battle Rush extends to the level X too. Scizor, I mentioned this with the Cherim before, if it's got 6 or more damage counters on it out of its 100 HP total, uh, all damage done to it is reduced by 40, which is a lot, but then you've only got 40 HP left, so oh well. Keep an eye on that ability with the, the uh, Shaman level X from next set that gives more HP to grass types then it actually becomes really good. But it's strong in its own right. Like 100 HP, 1 retreat, stage 1, good stuff there. 2 colorless energy to do 30 damage, but if you KO with this 30 damage, you get to agility next turn. 
so Scizor can't be affected by attacks and such. This damage gets modified by the Cherim, so you could be doing 40, 50, maybe even 60 if you get enough Cherim sound, and that's really, really good. Pound Down is a pretty strong beatdown attack as well. Two Grass Energy this time, but I mean, that's the same cost functionally. Uh, 40 damage. If you don't have a Pokemon with Poke Powers in play, you do 70 instead. This means you can't play your Clay Dolls, but there's enough regular draw that you can get away with it. And you also can sparingly play Yuxi if you can get it off the field with its own attack as well. So that's kind of neat. And once again, get a couple of Cherim into play and this is suddenly doing like 90 for 2. And that's really strong. Excellent beatdown card. There's a Steelix over here that snipes 20 to per... It's like you choose a Pokemon for each uh, energy that's on it. Snipe 20 for to that Pokemon. Yeah, whatever. It's like, you don't have enough energy on this thing ever, really. Uh, Tangrowth is pretty cool for the Sceptile deck. You passively just heal a damage counter off of this thing every turn, like in between turns. So, yeah, kind of neat. Green Acid is a weird attack because you've got to flip two coins separately for this again. 20 damage for Grass Colas, and if you flip heads on the first one, Confusion. Flip heads on the second one, Poison. Okay. Reaching Vine is pretty good if you can use it with Wild Growth. Uh, two Grass, two Colas, or two Grass if you attach with the Sceptile uh, in play. 60 damage and 20 to two of the opponent's bench Pokemon. Kind of like a bigger version of Magmortar, which was very strong. So yeah, cool stuff. Tyranitar is a pretty good deterrent Pokemon. Uh, yeah, this attack stuff is hella expensive, but it makes a lot of sense when you look at its body here. If the opponent uses a Poke Power, search your discard pile for a basic darkness energy, attach it to the Tyranitar. This is per Tyranitar, and it's not even once per turn. So you play chicken with the opponent, because Tyranitar's attacks scale with the amount of energy that's on it. Two colors to do 20 times the number of energy on the Tyranitar, so minimum 40, but this stacks very, very quickly. And Spinning Tail takes a colossal five energy, so you're probably not gonna see this too often but it does 30 damage to each of the opponent's Pokemon. Now, this does use basic darkness energy, so you pair this with Darkrai level X and turn all of your basic darkness energy into special darks functionally. And then Grind is doing 30 times, which is just ludicrous. Like 90 damage for free is pretty solid on something that self charges. And Spinning Tail would do 80 to the opponent's active and still 30 to all the bench. Really silly. Vespaquen, I don't know if there's a good deck for this, to be honest, but it's a cool card. Um, if you have more prizes left than the opponent, Vespaquen does 10 more damage for each grass Pokemon on your bench, which then turns its rather mediocre output into some pretty hefty hits here, for again, for 100 HP, dude. Beedrain does 20 damage for one grass energy, but you heal damage from Vespaquen equal to the amount of damage you did to the opponent. So if you have a full bench of grass Pokemon, you would do 70 for one, maybe more if some of those are Cherims, and you heal basically all of Vespaquen's health. Really cool. Bee Powder for a Grass Colas only does 50, but again, scaling it with stuff like Cherims, and if you're behind on prizes, you can do a lot of good damage with that. And if you flip two heads in a row, you burn, paralyze, and poison. Wowzers, that's a lot of status conditions. Yeah, it's kind of whatever, but it's still pretty cool. Beaverall is in here as well. Uh, it is 100 HP water type. Uh, 60 for 2 is respectable. Uh, 2 water, that is, but still, that's pretty solid. And it doesn't get affected by any effects of attacks except damage. So it's got Unknown G inbuilt to it. That's pretty good, to be honest. Amnesia is also quite strong here. You just get to blank one of the opponent's attacks next turn. So if you need water coverage and you don't, you know, don't have a lot of deck space for it, it's pretty cool. Uh, Budu isn't super great, but there is potential synergy with Skuntangi later on. Uh, prevent all effects of attacks, including damage done to Budu by the opponent's poison Pokemon. So, sure. And then Body Body for no energy searches your deck for any Pokemon, puts it into hand. Kinda cool. 
on to some of the other stuff there's like i think there's a couple of more fully evolved pokemon to look at before we start looking at the prevos that are good from this set electrode is something i've been playing quite in extensively actually if it's your active and damaged by an attack you put a damage counter on each of the opponent's pokemon which is pretty good 90 hp is also solid it tends to take at least one hit for most things and then low current for just one lightning energy does 30 damage but if you were damaged by an attack last turn, even if you weren't active, if you were sniped, you auto paralyze. So it's a really good deterrent and it's something I've been using with Starmie from the previous set to bounce the Starmie back to hand and then send this thing in. Because the opponent doesn't really want to damage it, so it's a good deterrent. Nice cut. Uh, then there's the Sableye, which is going to cause problems in black and white format, but we probably just emergency rotate that one, so we're probably fine. If it's the active at the beginning of the game, you just go first, regardless of the coin toss, unless both players have got Sableye in the active. And it's got two good traits. The first thing is that for no energy, you get to search your deck for a supporter card, discard it, and then use the effect of that supporter card as the effect of this attack. So it's a little bit slow when using it for Roseanne and such, but it does just get you into the game. You can Roseanne, you can Bebe's. You may be a turn slow, but it's better than not playing at all. And then Overconfidence is going to get more play later on, with stuff like Crobat G and Expert Belt being playable. One Darkness Energy, only 10 damage, but if your opponent's got less HP than you, you do 40 instead. So with a lot of damage mods later on, this is its own deck, and we're probably going to see it then, and probably going to hate it as well just because it's really dumb. Finally, yeah, let's look at some of the Brevos that are actually good here, because there's a fair few. Dusclops is really good here. For one Psychic Energy, you can do, uh, you can discard a card from your hand. If the if you do, the opponent discards as well. 20 damage for one. Reaper Cloth Duskull is still in format, so this is good early gameplay if you play enough of this. So Psy's been using that quite well. There's a Magneton over here that if you have a Stadium card in play, for 2 energy it does 20 and then 20 to 2 of the opponent's bench. That's quite strong. And then Magnetic Release is quite nice too. Lightning Double Colors is expensive, but 40 plus 10 for each light, uh, energy on the defending Pokemon is kind of good. Um, this also helps with a Magnemite here too, like this is another good card for that line. Uh, its retreat cost is less for every Magnemite on the bench. So if you play a dedicated starter, something like Jirachi or Pachirisu, if you get two Magnemite down, like you start with one and you get one on the bench, you can zero retreat and get into your ideal starter, which is pretty solid. Um, there's a combi over here that when you bench the combi, you get to search your discard pile for a basic Pokemon and bench that as well. So really good for the Gyarados deck next set, so keep an eye out on that. Just in case the Gengar wasn't busted enough already, the Ghastly for zero energy stops the opponent playing trainer cards next turn. So, yuck. You know, really nasty stuff with it there. And the Tangler, if you flip heads for one colorless energy, searches your deck for a grass energy to attach to the Tangler and gives it immunity next turn as well, which is pretty good. I think the last one that I want to note is the Mistrevus, which could pair with Darkrai from uh, Majestic Dawn, actually. Uh, zero energy sleep, yeah, okay, uh, it's decent enough starter. But for one energy, if the opponent is asleep, do 50 damage and heal 50 for Mischievous. So if you auto sleep them with the Darkrai from Majestic Dawn, that's 50 for one, like immediately. So Mischievous Darkrai could potentially be a deck, actually, because yeah, it's kind of nice. And I think that's about it. There's obviously uh, some of the other ones like Call for Friends and stuff here, like, like get a basic, whatever. There's some cool stuff that you can see, but for the most part, that is it, and oh boy, what a set this is. Just in case it wasn't clear already by how long this has been, there's like a dozen different decks that I have already built from this, and I haven't even made everything. I personally didn't build Regigigas, I haven't really built Machamp, there's even silly stuff like Mamoswine you could maybe use. There's a Cypher in here that's got zero retreat, so the Sizzle deck is really good, and it's just like... Yeah, there's so many different cards in this one set alone which are worth looking at. Crazy good set. So yeah, hopefully if you have made it this far, thank you very much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed yourselves and learned some good stuff about this set. And until next time, when whenever we do actually get to, to play this, 
let's just see some really cool stuff and hope that we can make it work out. Till then, take care.